Hey, Rick. Hey, Jack. Morning. Good morning. That hammer grab's fun to watch. Yeah. Dumas seems to be moving along quite quickly. Good. As a new day dawns on Oak Island, for brothers Rick and Marty Lagina and the members of their team, the hope that they may be on the verge of solving a 228-year-old treasure mystery has never been higher. Morning, Roger. Morning, Rick. How are you? Morning. How's it going? Nice to see you guys. Yeah. What's the depth? Well, right now, we're about 23 feet. Uh, we're going to be marking a little bit more, blowing that in, and then we're going to be installing another two sets. OK. Although a number of investigations are currently being conducted all across the island to search for critical clues and valuables, their most promising operation is underway in the Money Pit area with Dumas Contracting Limited, a mining company that is reconstructing the so-called garden shaft. The material's still just really mucky right now? Yeah, yeah, so it's kind of, you can tell that it's it's yeah. it's backfilled clay, yeah. but you're right, they, they kind of were careful as to what they dumped in there. Correct. Based on numerous recent discoveries this year, the team has good reason to believe that this 80-foot deep decayed wooden structure may be connected to the original money pit. Wood samples from the shaft have not only been dated to 1735, but water testing within it has also revealed high trace evidence of gold. In addition, it is also located in close proximity to a potential void or chamber that the team drilled into earlier this year at a depth of just 55 feet. There are some pretty concrete signs that say this might be the original money pit, or it could be right next to it. It could have been the original attempt, one of the original attempts. I really would like to see what's at the bottom of that shaft. So the hope is that once we get down 50, 60 feet, we'll be able to drill horizontally, vertically. Yep. Then hopefully we do find a tunnel from this shaft, at least in some direction. Some of our better water sample tests have been from here that had the gold and the silver. Yeah. We would love to find original work. So there's all kinds of hopes here. We just have to learn as much as we can about this location. Yep. Having already rebuilt the first two sets, or eight-foot sections, of the garden shaft, in the coming weeks, Dumas will complete a new vertical structure down to a total depth of approximately 80 feet. During the process, they also have the ability to probe outside the shaft and even build lateral tunnels in order to let members of the team search for evidence of treasure. Heads up, guys. Here we go. OK, tight lining coming down. Watch out. As the team from Dumas continues excavating and reconstructing wow. the garden shaft. Oh, that's pretty cool. Very cool. Members of the team will be able to monitor the operation using the Inuktan Spectrum 120 high-definition camera. So we're fortunate enough to be able to put a camera down here with Roger's assistance. So, I mean, it's, it's a great tool for us to be able to see what's going on down there. It's amazing. The device, which features a lens that can pan 360 degrees, is not only designed to operate in low light conditions, but is also equipped with a number of visual enhancement capabilities, such as high powered zoom function. It really gives you an idea how small of an area it is. You see those two it guys is. down there. Yeah. Do I believe that there's treasure at the bottom of the guard shaft? I'll be honest. I'm hopeful, but I just want to get underground the money pit. Let's get underground and exploit the opportunities that the shaft represents. I want to go down there. <laughs> Soon. <laughs> it's an exciting day. Yeah. Roger. Hey, how's it going, guys? Good. How are you? Good, 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 good. In the money pit area, Rick Lagina, along with Oak Island operations manager Scott Barlow, are about to experience a moment that Rick has dreamed of since he was just a boy and first read about the Oak Island mystery. We have all kinds of emotions running through us, you know. Bottom line is we're radically changing the search agenda now. We're going to go looking for what's underground by being underground. That's pretty cool. Oh, I think so. I think so. But it's kind of bittersweet, like I was telling him just before we walked in. This will be our 
only first time underground in the money pit, so we better enjoy it, right? Oh, yeah, for sure. It's going to be a moment that we're going to remember the rest of our lives. Yeah, absolutely. So okay, we'll, yeah, so we'll get you suited up also. I've got a couple of uh, coveralls for you guys here. Okay, cool. i got another one for you, Scott. Now that the reconstruction of the garden shaft has reached a depth of 44 yep. feet, and after completing the required safety training. Perfect. Rick will have his first opportunity ever to personally go underground in the Money Pit area. OK, guys, then we're going to head down there, and we're going to go see what we can see. Sounds good? Yeah. For the first time, we're going to go underground in the Money Pit. That in and of itself is pretty cool. But we're here to solve the mystery. Go ahead, Roger. Thank you. And the hope is that when we go down in the shaft, our senses will be more attuned to the possibilities of what the shaft represents in terms of furthering our understanding in the money pit. There we go. I'll go down and you guys can follow me in there. Let me know if you have any questions on the way down, Rick. Yep. Good. It's intensely emotional to be underground in the money pit where so many people who have come before us had that same experience. And I think life is all about shared experience because I do believe this is a wonderful story. And we know the people that have come before us. Their legacy now is being carried by us. Wow. Beautiful. I believed in Oak Island since I was a little boy. As a little boy, I dreamt of treasure and hidden wealth and booby traps and underground tunnels. Wow. And now that I'm underground in the money pit, I'm in awe. This is astounding. Oh, yeah. Yeah. This is pretty amazing. Yeah, it is, eh? So what you see below this set that we're installing right now, everything in there in the bottom that you see is all original. Wow. I mean, not just the work you're doing, which is quite amazing. Yeah. But this is what is astounding. You're looking at history, right? To see how that wood has been preserved is That's unbelievable, eh? It's amazing. It's quite remarkable. Yeah, it is, eh? You look at the shaft and you think, my goodness, people long ago, well, they didn't have cranes. It's a testament to their will, to their desire, to their belief that where there's a will, there's a way. And there was certainly a will to their enterprise not only the searchers, but the original depositors as well. So, Roger, now that we're down near 50 feet here, I mean, it, yeah. it, there's a lot of potential for other works to be in the area, offset chambers and the tunnel at the 95-foot mark. Oh, well, for sure. There may be original work beneath this. You're right. And that's the, one of the reasons why we pound on that timber all the time, to see if there's any void behind us. But yeah, we're expecting to get some answers as to what happened here, why. Boy, this is interesting, and it's, it's, it's quite phenomenal. Oh, it is. It is. It's been an amazing experience. You stand here, and you look up. Yeah. I, I can't explain how I feel right now. Thank you. This, this has been very unique, right? Yep. Forever grateful for this opportunity. I really, really Good. appreciate it. Glad you enjoyed it. OK, DN 11.5. Back in the Money Pit area. Thank you, Colm. No problem. Oh, top of 88. So we got 78 to 88. Let's see what it's giving us. The slice and dice. Charles Barkhouse and geologist Terry Matheson are closely monitoring the drilling of borehole DN 11.5. Now that it has reached the possible treasure zone between 80 and 120 feet deep. Hey, Charles. Hey, Ian. Hey, Ian. How you doing? How you doing, Terry? Not too bad. Good to see you. We're down DN 11.5. We're down 78 to 88 feet. We're really getting close. close. Yeah. yeah. Do something. Let's take a measurement on the pipe. Ready. What's going on over there? Saying. Saying we're open foot and a half. How we doing? How hey guys. Doing? So What's going on over there. I was doing my run to 100. Right. Right at about 90 feet. Broke through something. Wow. 
you got an open space 90 feet below grade. Right. There's a void down there. Well, so we're just going to talk this over and think yeah. of how we're going to proceed. We're definitely going to want you to pause. All right. I think we better get Rick and Marty up here. Sure. Let me, let me give him a call. Absolutely. We on pause, brah. Hold on. Hey, Rick. Whenever you get a call from the Money Pit Drill Program, you're excited. DN 11.5 is actually within the so-called treasure zone. The treasure zone we know has high gold values. We know the introduction of trapped air. We know voids in the area. It's exciting. Rick's here now. So you found it, and I can go home. <laughs> well, we got something interesting going on hey, here, Mike. Mike? Golden. Hey, guys. Hey, Hello gentlemen. The table. Judging by the people gathered here, something happened. When I walked up, everybody was smiling. What's going on? Come on down. What do we got? Mike, why don't you tell us what you saw or hit? At right about 90 feet, I could feel the rods break through something, and uh, it was open about a foot and a half past my rods. So whatever I cored through probably fell out into this void. So what is this? This DN 11.5. It really seems to line up. DN 12.5 and DN 13.5, all in that east-west alignment, all have hit a structure at 94 feet below grade. Mike hitting this right now at about 90. That says perhaps we're at the top of the tunnel. Because the team has recently encountered a believed tunnel at this same depth in two other nearby boreholes, which all line up with the garden shaft, could Terry Matheson be correct? that they have intercepted another section of the structure. If so, could it be related to the large amount of gold that has been detected within the baby blob? You've got to affirm whether or not it is a tunnel. And the only yeah. way to learn that is to pull the core. Exactly. Time out Get us some core. Time to find some treasure. Go get it, guys. Thanks. Every time a bit goes down, every time we encounter a void, your first thought is this might lead us somewhere to the long sought after answers, the long sought after treasure. Get it. Every single time. If we were to encounter a tunnel in close proximity to this shaft or even at the base of this shaft, that's a real aha moment. Got oh, he's got a big one. Thank you. All right, where'd you sit down? Uh, the end is 98 and a half. Where did your void end? The void ended at 97. You had that let's, much. Let's... There's some wood, Terry. Whoa, we, we got, got one at the wood. bottom here. Yeah. Oh my gosh, we're into something. It's all through there. There's a pretty solid chunk in the middle of it. There's wood all through this core. I'm just going to squeeze in there and get a wood sample. This sample right here, we don't need much. That sample should be fine. Uh, we're just going to send it in the lab really quickly just to see if there's metals in that wood. Later that afternoon. Laird. So we have something to see? Do, yes. Rick Lagina and Craig Tester join Laird Niven and archaeometallurgist Emma Culligan in the Oak Island Interpretive Center for a highly anticipated scientific report. We've got the XRF results from DN 11.5. Oh, good. This definitely appears to be a tunnel, mm -hmm. and it sure points towards the garden shaft. And then this specific area is where, you know, we've got a number of the most likely treasure areas. So-called treasure location. Yeah. Really? This will be interesting to see what we see on this. Over the past 24 hours, the wood sample recovered one day ago from borehole DN 11.5, which came from a believed tunnel some 90 feet deep that may be connected to the garden shaft, was dried out and then scanned by Emma using the X-ray fluorescence spectrometer, or XRF, a device that bombards objects with gamma rays, which can detect additional elements or metals that may be found on or within them. Emma, so what are we seeing? 
So we are seeing some very small quantities, so I had to do a lot of double checking. So the, all those are expected materials from our uh, Oak Island. We have a lot of iron, manganese, titanium, calcium, potassium, aluminum. So these are all common things. Those are all what I would expect. Natural, okay. Naturally occurring. Yeah, very natural. Yeah. But we are seeing some quantities of gold. It shows gold. Yeah, it, it's there. Gold is the outlier? Gold is a, yes. <laughs> it's a very big outlier. That's, that's remarkable. <laughs> now we have singularly unique results from the application of that concept in two different modems, if you will, in the wood and in the water. That's fantastic. Yeah. And this might connect you to where the treasure may be. This might connect you to a direction that you need to go. This is becoming very impactful. The narrative's still going on. Absolutely. Yeah. The gold sampling of the water and now the wood is probably the thing that might carry the day this year. I mean, that was the hope. It was always the hope that it would lead to a location where we could do some exploratory drilling or digging and hopefully find the one thing. Will we find the treasure at the bottom of the garden shaft? I'm very hopeful. This might be the start of evidence, an evidence trail that's every bit as important as the water sampling has been to date. Sure. So we mustn't falter. What we always say is you won't find samples hidden here in the lab. Here's where you come up with the answers. Yep. So we'll get you more samples. Mm -hmm. All right. All righty. Sounds good. Perfect. Okay. Well, you're clearly drilling. Yes. Well, I can hear it. Absolutely. Rick and Marty Lagina arrive at the Money Pit area to check on the progress of the probe drilling operation within the garden shaft. We're getting close. We're getting about three inches. Yeah. Oh, deep are they? Right, they're at depth down to 93 feet. And they should be right at the point where they should be right on if the wood. Yes. Having reached the approximate depth of the believed tunnel that may lead directly westward into the possible treasure zone, the burning questions are, can they locate the structure? And if so, can they breach it to see what it may contain? This is good. Today is the last day. There's no question about it. Dumas have to pack up. We have really only half a day of real active search agenda. What blows up is going on here. That was binding it up. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'll try that again. Go down some more. Yeah. Wood would do that. I'd like to pull the bits and see what's down there. What do you guys think? I'd do it before we run out of time. OK. Yeah, it's a good idea. Copy, Rodney. Go ahead, Roger. Yeah, the guys would like you to stop drilling right now. Let's pull the rods out. Let's clean out the filing, make sure everything goes in a bag and let's see what we can see. 10-4. Oak Island doesn't give up her secrets very easy. No, no, she does not. This is it. We're gonna have to get whatever information we can get and hopefully figure out what this wood is at the base of the garden shaft. So I'm hoping Rodney has found something significant. Hello, gentlemen. Hey, Rodney. What you got, Rodney? Bags of goods. Any sign of any wood in it? Nothing big. Let me just ask you this. You were pretty sure you were on wood. Are you still pretty sure? I'm like 99.9% .9 sure I hit wood on the north side. Unfortunately, we didn't have a, a direct hit and, and able to get into the tunnel, but we may have come down beside it. I think so, yes. If we just came down on the edge of it, we can use that to project the line of the tunnel. Rick, you and I got to go down there. We haven't explored the bottom yet to see where the tunnel is. Mm -hmm. So let's go get suited up. I want to go down in that shaft. 10 years ago, or longer, we never would have anticipated this moment where Marty and I get to go down together underground in the money pit. Well, Rick, um, it all started here, and so we're going down there together, right? So it's going to be pretty unique. It'll be interesting to see what our takeaways are. No, let's go down the damn shaft, OK? okay let's, let's go. go. Right, are you leading? Yeah. I leading. I'll lead you guys down there. We're ready to rock. Yeah. We're going to figure it all out right yeah. now. Yeah. It's like a childhood fantasy, isn't it? I mean, Rick and I 
60 years later, are going way underground in the money pit area. And we're in a position that other people were in over literally hundreds of years and trying to find this treasure. And I'm there with Rick, who has been enamored of this thing since he was 10. And, you know, here we are doing it together as brothers. All right, big brother, I know this is really quite awe-inspiring. Yeah, really is quite a trip back in time. It's pretty amazing. Oh, absolutely. OK, we're running out of time this year, but this thing is not going anywhere. Oh, no, oh, no. You know, this is where things would fall. You know, Gary always says, things fall to the lowest point, mm -hmm. right? If there's anything to be found in this shaft, it may be there. I think it's worth running a metal detector. Yes, but it also, what if we're five feet above something? He might be able to detect it. That's a great idea. And the other thing is that the coil he's got on there, you can immerse it in water. So yes. you could stand on the edge and put the coil down. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to give him a call. Hey, guys. Hey, Roger, this is Scott. Hey, Scott. Yeah, we're down here wondering if you guys can get Gary to come over here. Copy that. We'll get Gary and get him geared up to go down the hole. Works. Yeah. That. With the literally few moments we have left is to get Gary to try and metal detect him. Ah, finally. We could be close to the actual treasure. Oh, Mike, coming down. What do you think, Gary? Oh, wow. <laughs> huh? What a ride. <laughs> oh, my God, this is fantastic. <laughs> I have a chance to be the first person metal detecting down in the money pit. OK, detector coming down. OK, keep it coming. This is it. Standing next to Rick and Marty on these thick planks and knowing that there's all this mud and water below me. Got it. This feels fantastic. And the okay, whole scene around me looks like it's medieval, almost like I'm in a dungeon in a castle back in Templar days. Just so you know, there's going to be a lot of modern nails yeah. and, and wire down, yeah, down no, there. No worries, mate. That's why I'm using my CTX 3030. You've got the discrimination bells and whistles with this. That's what we need, Jerry. Um, we're looking two different things. Rick's idea is that we are at the base of the old shaft, and if yeah. those guys dropped anything, it's here. Oh, right? yeah. Yeah. And then the other thing is, what if we're close to some something big? Mm. You know, you and I. Yeah, <laughs> right. <at> this one. <laughs> There's that, yeah. too. Yeah. So, all right, we got to move that board. Rick, okay, mate. You and I do that. Yeah. Over here. Put it over there. OK. There's a hole. It's two feet deep. OK. Well, where does Muck this treasure, mate? Yeah. <laughs> we'll see what's down there, mate. All right. Extend it a little bit. All right. Oh, that's the best sounding target. Yeah, that sounded really good. We know where the hits are, yeah. just as importantly. This is a non-ferrous target. This could be gold, it could be silver, it could be copper. Either way, it's a great sounding signal. Gary, you're the man. You're the man. <laughs> no, that yeah. was so much fun. <laughs> <sighs> Is it possible that Gary has detected evidence of the fabled Oak Island treasure in the muddy soil, just a few feet below the bottom level of the garden shaft? Or could the signals be coming from the believed tunnel, some 10 feet below, which runs westward toward the baby blob? <laughs> you guys are grinning from ear to ear. As exciting as this moment is, it is also bittersweet because at this point in the year, Dumas does not have the legal permits to extend the shaft any deeper. And Rick and Marty cannot risk the future of the project, nor the safety of their team, by attempting to breach the bottom of the shaft to explore what could be dangerously unstable ground below. The level of excitement when he describes a non ferrous hit, it's through the roof. And that's why it's so frustrating not to go after this target, but we're at the end of the year. I wish there was more time. Yeah. All right, here's the deal. We're done for today. Everybody's cold. Put this ladder back up. Let's get out of here. Tomorrow, we will have the final war room. Yeah.
the following morning. Gentlemen, ladies. To me, I'm not going to get real eloquent, and everybody knows I'm pretty shy, but I, I do want to say that, you know, every journey is a shared experience, and we have been on a decades-long journey together, all of us, and that's quite remarkable. Think how eclectic this group is, how different we are, how we bring different skill sets, different perspectives, different understandings, different logic to what is an incredible mystery. And remember where the journey started. It's that little five pages, that's where the journey started. And this is decades in the making. And then think of all the others that have come before us. It's, it's incredible. Right? It's absolutely incredible. Just give yourself a moment in time and say, you know what? I was part of something that was much bigger than myself. I just want to say that, you know, you guys know I get a little bit emotional, but I appreciate each and every one of you. I really think that we have done something together that is quite remarkable. I'm glad my brother's been with me and my nephew and Peter and <laughs> David as well. And Everybody, you know, the whole family has really been involved in this, as has Tom's. And so I, I, I am really grateful for the experience. We're not done yet. We're not done yet. No. We're grateful he brought us for the ride. Absolutely. <sighs> what a ride. <laughs> 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 Look, Rick, you say you're not eloquent. I would say you're quite eloquent. And I think that is a perfect ending to this year. I will just thank everybody again. Uh, I know everybody here does live and breathe all this. But for now, I think we're done. Yep. Yeah. And we haven't seen nothing yet. That's right, Gary. As they prepare for the next great chapter of this adventure next spring, will Rick, Marty, and the team finally be able to answer the ultimate questions and shatter the curse of Oak Island? Hey, there he is. Hello. Jeremy, how are you? I'm great. Good to see all you guys. You? Marty Lagina, <laughs> along with his son Alex and Craig Tester, are meeting with geoscientists Jeremy Church and Burton Cosgrove in the research center. Due to the delay of the garden shaft reconstruction, and also in light of the recent discoveries made on the western side of the island, Jeremy, you guys brought some high-tech stuff that we're going to deploy on the island? Yeah. The Oak Island team has invited Jeremy and Burton to conduct a comprehensive geophysical scan of all of Oak Island's 32 four-acre lots. So the unit is known as EM31-8. Okay. It is a near-production prototype, but it, uh, it's based on a, yeah, an older technology. It's been around for a few decades now. It's just kind of a new riff on it. What it measures is conductivity and it's gonna collect that data down to a depth of 30 feet. Cool. So, you know, wherever you're gonna have metallic objects on the island, obviously this thing's gonna pick it up real nice. But you also could be picking up things like old foundations where the soil's been disturbed or there's large anomalies. These are all gonna be clues to the activity of, you know, previous occupants of the island. Sounds good. Yeah. We were talking about what are we doing in the swamp that's, that's my first suggestion. No, that's spot on, Alex. It's warm right now, but the bugs aren't out yet. Mm -hmm. That would be a really good place to start. And you could take it in a boat, no problem, right? Yeah, definitely. Another reason for starting with the swamp is a couple of years back, you guys had that ship-shaped anomaly uh, in the swamp. And we tried to dig it. Uh, we didn't have a lot of success. But if this equipment can give us another look at that area just to confirm and hopefully yeah. get more meaningful information yeah, that way. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. It was during a seismic scanning operation conducted in 2018 by Jeremy and his colleagues from Eagle Canada that identified a massive anomaly resembling the size and shape of an ancient galleon ship in the middle of the swamp. Although the team has been unable to verify just what the feature is, since then they've unearthed numerous pieces of believed sailing vessels dating from as late as the 17th century to as early as the 3rd century AD. Now it is the team's hope that Jeremy and Burton can identify new clues, not only on dry land, but also in the swamp that might help them obtain new permits to drain it and confirm just what it may contain. 
We're here to try to solve an incredible mystery. Is there a swamp component to solving that mystery? I believe there is, and I absolutely want to pursue it. If we can get data from you early on to incorporate in part of the permit, that'd be great. Yeah. So we'll get you going. Thanks, guys. Seriously, guys, we'll get it. Thank you. See you. Bye-bye. Appreciate it. Later that afternoon. Jeremy. Gentlemen, hello. Good to see you. Hello, Craig. Good to see you. Tony, good to see you. Nice to see you. Diver Tony Sampson has joined Craig, Alex, Jeremy Church, and Burton Cosgrove at the swamp as they prepare to begin conducting their survey using the EM318 scanning device. So how's it going to work? Really, the key to all this is getting good lines. It's all about the grid that we do. We need really a tight grid so we don't miss any small anomalies. And that's part of the reason why Tony's going to be in the water rather than rowing. Yeah, but to get the straightest, cleanest lines, you can't beat human power. In order to scan the swamp, Tony will guide the boat in straight grid lines. The EM318 ground conductivity device measures the magnetic field emitted by metallic objects or structures that may be buried as much as 30 feet deep underground. Although the device can register immediate preliminary results, the data that it collects will require several weeks of post-processing in order to generate a three-dimensional map of potential man-made targets. Okay, gentlemen, um, I'm gonna go and do some other things, but I'll check back in every once in a while. And okay, That's thanks. Right. See you later, Craig. Yeah. Okay. What do we need to do? All right, well, let's get this on the boat. The first thing we need to do in the swamp is to determine actual targets. Yeah, we're good. Non-destructive, non-invasive, and if we come up with a legitimate target or targets. OK, so you guys got it all set up? I believe so. Then we will begin that process of applying for permits and uh, try to come up with a plan. Here we go. Thank you, sir. Best of luck. Thank you. How's that for a starting point, guys? Yeah, that's a good one. Yep, we're online. Still good? Yep. Whoa, yeah, she's going Big one? Like, off oh, through the roof. Yeah, what level was that at? See, it's all through them, so. Really? Yeah, it's basically sitting on top of the, the seismic anomaly, too. There'll be some metallic objects in there. Wow. Possible metal objects in the same location where Jeremy Church detected a 200-foot-long ship-shaped anomaly four years ago? Has the team potentially found more evidence that the swamp could contain the wreck of a centuries-old treasure galleon? And if so, could it be related to the Stone Road, as well as the other discoveries made around the island that may be Portuguese in origin? Good to go, Tony. Good to go. Boom, something was happening right there, yeah. That one, another hit there. Another hit there? Yeah. I have to admit that every time we've dug in the swamp, we found stuff that seems to be significant. We have all kinds of stuff from the swamp that's intriguing. We have the enigmatic stone road that anyone can tell is a man-made feature and doesn't make any sense to be in a swamp. We have bits of wood that have very peculiar dates on them from the swamp. So. In order to finish this quest, we have to finish the swamp. Hey, Brandon. Hey, yes. Lauren, Alex, Rick. How are you How's doing? Going? Perfect timing. We're just getting started with the pro drill. Okay, dope. Cool. Every new day on Oak Island begins with hope and excitement for brothers Rick and Marty Lagina, their partner Craig Tester, and the rest of their team. Come down, folks. Oh, oh, oh. However, today has been especially anticipated as it marks the beginning of a new probe drilling operation that will be conducted from within the garden shaft by representatives from Dumas Contracting Limited in order to look for valuables just outside the structure. This dilapidated 80-foot deep shaft, which is currently being refurbished by Dumas, 
has not only yielded high trace evidence of gold through water testing, but may also set within mere feet of a possible treasure chamber connected to the original money pit. It's exciting. I'm hoping for something very substantial in the garden shaft. This is where the treasure hunt actually begins. So Brandon, this is 55 feet, right? Yes, sir. So close to that depth, when we were drilling, we hit a void in this area. So just a heads up. Wow, heads up. Surprise, surprise, man. Yeah. man. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> How much do you think we're missing out of that last 30 feet? I'd say approximately 10 feet. Earlier this summer, the team drilled into a 10-foot high void located several feet southwest of the garden shaft. This could be the indication of an offset chamber. A void that Marty Lagina speculated may hold the fabled Money Pit Treasure Vault. All good. Let's try real. OK. Yeah. They're just lining up, getting it squared away. OK. Now, since Dumas has reached a depth of 55 feet in the reconstruction of the garden shaft, they are about to manually probe drill a number of boreholes that will reach several feet outside of the structure in the hopes of reaching the void and determining just what it might contain. If there is some sort of connection here, they need to know it and we need to know mm -hmm. it. If we get lucky, this will tell us. Drill's going in now. All right, but we're in business. Yep. In order to probe drill from within the garden shaft, the team from Dumas is using a powerful hydraulic earth drill equipped to penetrate hard clay, sediment, and rock. Although they are focused on finding the nearby void, they will drill a total of three holes in each of the shaft's four walls for a total of 12 at different angles in order to look for further evidence of man-made workings and potential valuables. You're grabbing soil samples. Yes, sir. But the other thing is, when you cut through this tight lining, the yeah. old tight lining. I would? Yes, I would like that small piece yeah, on, it, on every hole. Yeah. I just wanted to put it in our XRF because we have detected high gold values in the area. High gold values. Right. My thought was wood would act like a sponge if we test the outside of the shaft. We know the water samples are indicating presence of gold. Well, certainly the wood should as well. We need to get busy. Hi, guys. Charles. Hey, Charles. Hey, our man right here might know. Yeah. See, they're drilling right now. Yeah. They're drilling from here. That's where we started here. Going clockwise. OK. So I'll tell you what, guys. I, I'm very interested in these wood samples and, and the soil samples. So I'm going to head down to the lab, bring them to Emma. Take her out, buddy. Yep, Show you. Take her out. OK. Take her out. You guys are in yep. charge. Anything comes up, give me a we'll call. Will do. Thank you. Hey, all right, see you. All right. Right. See ya. See ya. The following morning. Hello. Oh my God, it's a crowd. Hello, how you doing? Please. Emma's got some news. So you guys gave me these. Right. This piece right here, because it's small, I could do a map scan Wait, of it in what, the shortest. What, what is that? That's the garden shaft inner lining that yeah, okay. the wood pieces. Yeah. The original shaft. Yeah. And from this one, I detected gold wow. to confirm your theory is gold. Gold, yeah. yeah. Gold in the wood? Yeah. Gold. Wow, that's wild. Oh, wow. Yeah. In the money pit area, archaeometallurgist Emma Culligan has just shared some astonishing news. Yeah, I confirmed it. I had to make sure, but there's definite gold, yeah. The wood samples extracted from a depth of 55 feet inside the garden shaft contain high trace evidence of gold. What degree of accuracy do you believe that to be? This one's accurate. 100%. Yeah. Well, there you go, guys. <laughs> and it's adhered to the organic material, the wood. Yeah, 0.11%. So it's 0.1, well, yeah. but still, that is enough. This is huge. Isn't that like a big number? That's a big number for my, in my books, that's a big number. It is, because it's a lot of parts per billion. So, I mean, all we can do is continue, like, with the water to cross-check, like, Check other samples, see if we can duplicate. This girl can find gold. That's a superpower around here. <laughs> yeah, <okay. laughs> the results are incredible, fantastic, gobsmacking, to use one of Gary's terms. That's huge, isn't it? Like, that's, that's a, a lot. Big, that's like significant. Yeah. We could be close to the actual treasure. We've got a little bit of time to pull it all together 
and we're going to work together to do that. That's where we are right now. I'm hopeful. We've always said that, you know, science had to be a real component of the search, and now this analysis is incredibly invigorating. Look at the smile around the table. I mean, everybody's smiling, so it's, it's a great component. And we always said that this shaft would provide a unique opportunity if we were humble enough and smart enough to learn from lost opportunities, right? Yeah. Anyway, I think we all owe Emma a round of applause. Oh, Our God. Come <laughs> on, gold around here, you get applause. <laughs> well, thank you for bringing the news. We appreciate it. It's, it's all good news. And search for the truth. Absolutely. Find us some more. <laughs> yeah. More gold. <laughs>